So I wanted to start off by saying that we're jumping into the activities and uh, I wanna make sure that you go to the activities and try to do it yourself first, okay? Don't just copy what I do. Um, but the, the best way I think is to uh, brainstorm your own ideas, how you might wanna do it uh, and see what you come up with because you might come up with something that I would have never thought of. All right, people, this is part four. Uh, we're gonna jump into the activities. You should have everything you need to know um, by now so that you can do these activities. But if you go to vr.vex.com and then click activities, it'll open up this other tab for you. And you'll see here the first activity is basketball drills. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna open up basketball drills. And you see here that it gives you a brief description. Um, I'm gonna do mine just a little bit different. I want mine to show up on the actual lines. But let's look at level three, because uh, really I think that's where you're at. If you're watching these videos and you've uh, been successful in the first part, three parts, then I think you're good at level three. Uh, we're gonna build an algorithm. Algorithm is a process of uh, set or process or set of rules uh, to move through all one to eight grid squares in sequential order. The VR robot should move to one, go back to the start, move to two, go back to the start. And uh, in this pattern should go for all eight grids. I am not gonna change the color of the, um, of the lines because I think that would add a little bit more complexity than we really want here. And while the picture does show them in different colors, uh, the challenge uh, listed in level three does not uh, does not in, you know say that so we're just gonna overlook that uh, uh, what's showing there okay so I'm gonna go back to a vex code and I'm gonna load the playground by clicking playground in the upper right and on my playground right here and the first thing I notice is that my robot really isn't where I want it to start okay if I grab under looks if I grab the pen and say pen down and let's say I drive forward for 200 millimeters, which should be one block, and I start, I'm gonna see that my, my lines aren't, they're not lining up with the, uh, the grid lines on here. So it's not gonna be as satisfying for me to see that it's going exactly where I want it to go. All right, so I know that uh, I'm right in the middle, the pen is right in the middle of that grid. grid. So if it's right in the middle, then I want it to start a uh, hundred millimeters further up. Then I should be at my starting point, just like that. So now if I reset and push play, now I can see that it is right over top of that grid lines. And then I wanna put the pen down. Uh, and then I wanna drive forward for 200. And uh, then I wanna come back. Okay, so, and actually I'm, I'm just gonna go straight back. I don't need to turn around, right? Reverse. Then I, know, I need to get ready for my second line. So I'm gonna turn right and then go forward and then turn left, right where I wanna be, hopefully. Well, let's push play and see what happens. Okay, drew it right on that box, it's perfect. Okay, now I don't wanna draw lines. Uh, I want them to be separate lines. So I do need to pick that pen up so I want that before, right after it comes back. Yeah, it doesn't matter if it's drawing the line on its way back, so up. All right, perfect. Now the cool thing about this is I know that the second line needs to be two blocks, and then the third line needs to be four blocks. So I go, hmm, one, two, four. What's happening there? Each time it's doubling. So I could take this whole thing right here and copy it three times, and then just change the values uh, for uh, these, basically these two right here, the 200 and the 200. I wouldn't need to copy uh, this 100, right? So I could just copy all three of these. Let's just do that. And then the third time it's gonna go 800. There's some math going on. Either we're going one more square uh, or we're going double the distance uh, or something like that. 
Uh, so because we're doing the same thing over and over again, we're going forward and then backward and then turning and then going to the next spot and then forward and back and then turning, going to the next spot and then forward and backward. The only thing that's changing is the distance that I'm going forward and backward. And that distance is based on the previous distance. So this is my algorithm. Pen down, forward, uh, backward, pen up, then go to the next spot, basically. I want to repeat that over and over again, and I want to manipulate the uh, distance that it goes. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a repeat because I'm going to have it set uh, a specific number of times. We'll just do exactly what I did before. Um, so we'll do three lines. So then we'll repeat this three times. All right. Each time, I don't want it to draw a 200 millimeter square. So if I did this right now, all right, so now I have three lines of the same distance. But I don't want them to be the same distance. Let's say I want the second line to be twice as long as the first line and the, the third line to be twice as long as the second line. All right, I can do that with variables. So I need to create my variable and I'm just gonna call it my variable, that's fine. Uh, the very first thing I wanna do in the very beginning is set my variable. My first line I want to be 200, I know that. So now if I go to my variable and I plop it into where I had typed 200 originally, reset and go, it's gonna do the exact same thing because it's just using that variable that I set and the variable isn't changing. But a variable, um, a lot of times you're gonna wanna use it because you wanna change the variable. Uh, you could use it just because it's easy to put it in multiple places and you don't have to change one number. But variables are very powerful because you can, um, you can manipulate them, you can change them over uh, the course of your program. So after it draws the first line, I want it to change the variable. So I'll put in a set variable to, I want the, the variable to be set to the whatever the variable is now times two. So I'm gonna grab one of these operators, the multiplication operator, drop it there, and I'm gonna see, set my variable to my variable times two. So it's gonna say, set my variable to my variable. Well, what's my variable? It's 200 right now, times two, so it'll be 400. The next time it runs, it says, well, what's my variable? Well, it's 400 now, times two, okay, now it's 800, okay? Let's give it a shot and see what happens. All right, there we go. You know, and if I wanted to do, I don't know if I have enough room, let's try it four times, let's see if we have enough room, but you can, it'll illustrate that it, It'll just keep going. That variable will just keep on going, keep on going. Okay, so it looks like I had just barely enough room that I could do those four lines. All right, well, what if I didn't wanna do a multiplication? Well, that's fine, I've got these other operators, right? So I can get rid of this green operator and say plus. You know, so I'll say my variable equals my variable plus 200. Okay, because that's, that's how much each square is. You know, and I could say run that, I think like eight times, right? Refresh. There you go. Nice linear chart there for you. All right, that's it. That's activity one. I think uh, you can see that the code is real short. It does what we need it to do. And uh, I really hope that you uh, enjoy doing this and you learn something from it and, you know, mess around.